Today on Film Linen, we're doing this. Hey guys, welcome to Film London, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And today we take on a tiny effect. It's just a small episode. Puns. My God. Thank you, Lawrence. I deserve that. So no doubt you saw my car shrinking effect teaser, so you know what we're doing. We're doing a car shrinking effect today from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Specifically, I'm going to be using this car, which is a one 35th scale model of my wife's car that I found on eBay. Now guys, one thing I will say from the outset, if you can't find a reference model like this of the car that you plan to shrink, you can also use a 3D model or you can just use footage of the car itself. So you're not limited in any way if you can't find a little reference model, okay? Now guys, in order to complete this effect, you need to grab a few things when you're shooting. One, you need a completely clean plate with nothing in it. Two, you need to get a shot of your big car parked in the shot. And three, you need to get that big car out of the shot. And if you're using a reference model like my little one right there, you need to place it in a central location where your big car was parked. So it looks like it shrinks down naturally. But if you're using a 3D model or you're just using footage of the car, you're all good to go. Now guys, one pro tip I will mention when it comes to shooting this from someone who made that mistake, shoot at a time of day where the sun is at a point in the sky where it's not going to change a lot. Specifically, an overcast day where there's no clouds and there's a minimal amount of shadows about would be perfect. I shot mine at 6 o'clock in the morning when the sun was coming up and over the shooting time of about 20 minutes, the shadows changed dramatically and I had a hell of a time trying to match them and fix them all up using masks in After Effects. So don't make my mistake guys. Shoot on either an overcast day where the shadows are minimized or shoot at a time of day where the shadows aren't going to move much at all. This is good advice, guys. You can thank me later. Now, one more little tip, guys. You may have noticed that when the car goes from small to big that it wobbles a little bit. And that's as simple as me just hitting record on the camera, heading around the back of the car where I wasn't seen in the shot, and just pushing the car slightly to give it a bit of natural wobble. It might seem like a little thing, but it really helps sell the idea that the car is going shrink. So you got all that, guys? We need a clean plate. We need a shot of the big car. We need a shot of the little car if you are using one. And you need to shoot at a time of day where either the shadows are not going to move or shoot when it's overcast and the shadows are minimized. If you've got all that, let's get to work, shall we? Okay, guys, here we are in After Effects. And as always, my shot is set up in a comp and ready to go. Now, since I called this the car shrinking effect, today we're going to be focusing on the shot after I get into the car. Since, you know, I'm actually shrinking there. So we'll probably take a quick look at the other growing effect later, but the main focus of this episode is gonna be this one right here. So you can see we have two shots in the comp. We've got our big car shot, and under that, we've got our shot of our tiny model car. Now, whether you do this shot or not, totally up to you, gang. You can also add in a 3D model of your car, or just use the footage of your actual car that you've masked out. We've also got our clean plate up here in the project menu, but let's get started. Our first step is to find the point on the timeline where you want the car to shrink. About here is good for me. From there, we're going to split the clip by hitting Control Shift D, and this will give us a little slice of big car footage to work with. Next, let's grab the pen tool and draw a mask all the way around the car like so. Don't be shy about the detail, gang. Now, if you want to use the Roto tool, go for it. I ain't going to stop you. I've just got an issue here with the top of the car being overexposed and the roto tool can't see the difference between the car and the sky, so masking for me. Once that mask's done, we'll then hit F and feather it out around 5 pixels or so. Done. From there, it's time to shrink this car down. To do that, let's firstly head up here and grab the pan behind tool, because at the moment, our anchor point is in the middle of our shot, so if we were to say scale it down, it's going to scale towards that anchor point. But if we grab said anchor point and move it down to where our model car is, we'll be able to shrink it down right on top of it. Okay, anchor point is moved. Let's scale this thing down. 
hit S to bring up our scale controls, hit the stopwatch, I'm then gonna go ahead say four frames, and then shrink the car down to almost match my toy car like so. Let's then turn on motion blur for the comp and the layer like so. Now you can see we've run into a little bit of an issue here. Even though we've changed the anchor point on our car, once we've shrunk it down, it's still sort of sitting on top of our model car and it's not matching the position exactly. So all we're gonna do here is hit P, hit the stopwatch on position at the start of our animation, then head to the end of our animation and we'll adjust the position of our big car to sit just on top of our toy car. Done. If we check out a little bit of a preview, you can see they marry up nicely now. Now our last step with this layer is to hit T to bring up opacity. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fade off that last frame because if we get to the end of our animation, that motion blur is gonna become unblurred and it'll just be the straight car footage. And we don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is head to the second last frame of that animation, hit the stopwatch, and then head forward one frame and just crank this bad boy down to zero. Now gang, if you don't have a model and you're not trying to blend these shots, you can just extend this footage out gang and you'll have your scaled down car. Now, here's where we need our clean plate gang. As you can see, we have our car shrinking down, but we can see our toy model before the car shrinking actually happens, which is a bit of a no-no. So let's grab that clean plate from the project window now and drop it in under our masked car layer like so. And from there, we're gonna trim this layer to end on the last frame of our shrinking car. Done. Let's then grab the pen tool and draw a mask around the area where our model car is. This way, we only use the clean plate where we actually need it. Awesome. Now, we've got our car shrinking down, but we do have a little issue here. The moment we cut to the shrinking animation, the shadow disappears from underneath our car. So, here's how we fix that. Let's head to Effect, Perspective, and grab Drop Shadow. Now gang, the settings I'm putting in here are for my shot. They'll no doubt be completely different for your shot, so I'm not going to talk about them, you know, in specifics. The best advice I can give you here is to play with the angle, the distance, the opacity, and the softness, basically all the controls of Drop Shadow, to best match the shot that you've got. These settings look pretty good to me overall, so to finish off the shadow, I'm going to hit the stopwatch on distance, and then I'll skip ahead a couple of frames before the end of our shrinking animation, say here, and I'll just lower the distance slightly. Once again guys, we're trying to sell the illusion that the shadow is also shrinking as our car shrinks. Our next step is to add the ghosting effect that is present on all Ant-Man shrinking. And believe it or not, I've actually developed a super easy way to do this, especially compared to my last one. So let's start by duplicating our shrinking layer here, and then we're going to right click and hit pre-compose and let's make sure all those attributes are moved into the new composition. Let's then open that comp up and remove the shadow layer. Alrighty, let's head back to our final comp and change the transfer mode on that ghost pre-comp to screen. From there, I'm going to use an effect that some of you have probably have never used before or even knew was there. Let's head to time and choose CC wide time. Now what this effect does is create a soft echo effect based on your layer's movement. It's pretty cool actually. So what we're going to do is hit the stopwatch on backward steps, head forward say 3 frames, and then I'll bump this up to 3 or 4. As you can see, we now have the beginnings of a ghosting effect. Now, let's enhance that a bit. First off, I'm going to head to color correction and add a tint, and I'll maybe pop this back down to say 75%. Lastly. I'm gonna head back up and add ourselves a fast blur right here. I'll then set that to around five. If we check out our preview, you can see our shrinking effect now has a nice ghosting effect that took, what, two minutes? Pretty sweet, huh? And as I said, way less complicated than my last shrinking effect. Our last step is a little cherry on top, gang. All I'm gonna do is add a dust wave to add a bit of environmental interaction to the shot. This dust wave comes courtesy of Action VFX and their awesome Dust Waves Volume 2. Now, all I'm going to do is just drop this in around the point near the end of the shrinking animation, scale it to fit my footage, and then I'll say lower the opacity down so that it doesn't overwhelm the shot. 
Now guys, whether you do this or not is totally up to you, but I highly recommend you do something to add some environmental interaction as it always helps with shots like this. And guys, if you want to check out Dust Waves Volume 2, just head on over to actionvfx.com and hey, if you want to pick it up, use the coupon code FILMLEARN and you'll get 10% off your purchase. If we check out a preview now guys, that is our finished shot of our car shrinking effect. Now I did say we touch on the growing effect as well guys. Now in terms of the difference between these two shots, you're basically doing everything in reverse. Instead of scaling down your car, you're scaling it up. But the biggest difference is in the ghosting. If I select a layer, you can see instead of using backward steps, I use forward steps. It's kind of a given. Now guys, you can also see that I've added some camera shake as well in the final shot, and that was courtesy of the awesome Deadpool Premiere Pro presets that are free to download in the link in the description, gang. But for now, that is another effect mm, done. Out of all those steps, you can get something like this. So guys, that's my take on a car shrinking effect from Ant-Man and the Wasp. As you can see, it's really not that hard to put together if you, say, shoot at a time of day where the shadows don't completely drive you insane. But for now guys, that is my time. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And hey, if you did, smash that like button. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't already picked up your entry pack for the Film Learn and 100K short film competition, head to filmlearner.com, click on the 100K comp button and download that entry pack because you've still got plenty of time to enter your short film. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button right there and turn those notifications on so you don't miss a single film in an episode. I've got two other episodes right over here. I've got all my social media crap above my head as well as our Patreon right here. We've got an exclusive sound effects pack coming out very soon. But until I see you again guys, keep learning.